If you're still on the fence about getting the R36S console, by the end of this video your life will be split into before and after. I've already told you how I played the iconic game Half-Life on this little console, and today I'll show you how I launched its sequel, Half-Life 2. It might sound crazy, but this little device is capable of a lot. In this video, we'll test how Half-Life 2 runs along with all addons and even Portal. So let's not wait any longer, let's dive in. By the way, I've already made two videos on this topic, where I explained in detail how to install Half-Life, GTA 3 and GTA Vice City on the r 36 s plus games like Star Wars Jedi Academy, Tomb Raider, Fallout and many more are also available on this console. Make sure to check out those videos through the links in the description box. Half-Life 2 is a legendary game, and you can buy it on official platforms like Steam. This is super important, because purchasing the game supports the developers. However, Half-Life 2 isn't officially supported on Portmaster, and the original game can't run on the r 36 s without special modifications. Running it on this console is possible thanks to the enthusiasts who reworked the game's files, simplified the graphics and maximized the adaptation for this small console. So this is version created solely for performance testing. I want to be clear that I am not distributing the game or providing any download links. However, if you're interested in testing the performance of Half-Life 2 on your r 36 s you can find modified versions of the game in the various Telegram groups or other communities dedicated to modifying games for Portmaster. These communities are full of enthusiasts who often share tips and resources to adapting classic games to portable consoles. Just remember, it's important that you legally own the original game for PC before exploring any modifications. After unpacking the archive with the test version of the game, I copied all the files into the ports folder on the My SD card with the games. I also made some tweaks to the configuration files to adjust the lighting and make the controls more convenient. Now the game is copied to the SD card and ready to go. And before we continue, please like and subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment, this helps me promote the channel. Also, you can click the bell icon, so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you for your attention, let's continue. Let's play. The game takes a while to load, but it's worth the wait. As you can see, I've already started playing. The controls feels pretty smooth, and the game runs well. Playing Half-Life 2 on the r 36 s is surprisingly comfortable. I also tried running Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Oh my god! Gordon! I was so worried. 
The game starts at the base of the citadel, right from the beginning, with the heavier graphics and effects. The game slows down a lot, it clearly needs more optimization here. However, as you move further along, the gameplay becomes somewhat manageable. As you progress through the story, you interact a lot of Alex, and the goal is to escape the city. The one really frustrating thing is that the game unexpectedly crashes when loading next areas. Next up, Half-Life 2, Episode 2. This picks up right where Episode 1 left off. You're outside the city, and your goal is to reach the Resistance's main base and deliver the data from the Citadel. To me, it feels like this episode runs even slower than the first. Playing becomes uncomfortable due to constant lags and freezes. But still, the fact that this tiny console can run a game like this is mind-blowing. I am really impressed. Next, I tested Lost Coast. In this game, Gordon Freeman regains consciousness on the shore near a coastal village. He meets an old fisherman, who explains that they combined to cover a church on the cliffs and set up a launcher for headcrab shells to bombard the village. Your mission is to make your way up to the church, fighting combined soldiers along the way. The game starts to lag as soon as the first enemies appear, making it hard to enjoy. From all this, my takeaway is that the main Half-Life 2 game is the best optimized for the console. Although, the collection also includes Portal, so let's test that too. The game loads just as slowly as Half-Life 2. Before the first portal appears, the frame rate drops drastically, and the game starts lagging hard. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible to play, especially since the entire game requires quick portal placements. It's really a shame. But since this is a test version, there is hope that Portal and the Half-Life 2 expansions will get better optimization in the future, allowing us to fully enjoy the storyline. I hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I wish you pleasant nostalgia and successful completion of your favorite games.